valuable learning. Yeah. 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 No shit. But what about See, you guys? I, uh, I, don't, I don't think you even got hazy. Well, no. So here, here's my uh, here here was what happened with me was that the the very first you know as as in golf platoon there was what seven of us new guys. Yeah. And you know the tradition is at, at some point fairly early on all the new guys get an initiation hazing. It's more. You know, well, oh, I remember that one. Yeah, more, I was surfing yeah. out of the island. And I got into it late. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more kind of a welcome to the club, you know, kind of thing. It's it's not a, a remedial tool. It's an initiation thing. So it's usually not as severe, though it, it can get out of hand. But, but it can get. Yeah. It can get the. But so you must so he, so me and the AOIC at the time, uh, I was the Intel rep. So he and I were going through an Intel school, while the platoon went to San Clemente Island. Like we were graduating on Friday, you guys went out there on Thursday. So we stayed back, uh, graduated from the Intel school on Friday, and then, lucky us, we uh, didn't have a fucking plane out to San Clemente Island, so we jumped in an 11-meter rib and rode that <laughs> motherfucker at 10 at night from, from <laughs> fucking Glorietta Bay to, San, to uh, fucking San Clemente Island. Right oh, it's like fucking the Bluebird Christ. buses to Tennessee because they <laughs> canceled our benefit. flight. Yeah, full benefit. I mean, I was pissing blood for a week, but... <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, we get out there, and you guys had been out there, you know, the night prior, and, and I remember, I'll never forget, showing up Saturday morning, and I'm fucking running there, hey, we're out of San Clemente Island again, and we're not students, sweet, and everybody's like, fuck you, like, <laughs> black eyes and swollen lips and fucking hair missing, and just looked like a bunch of fucking, you know, Rory's looking like a drowned sewer rat, which he kind of always did, but... Yeah. But That's uh, the nickname, Rad. But and so Rory, I'm looking but... around, I'm like, what the fuck happened to you guys? And like, like nobody would even fucking talk to me. They're like, fuck you, you goddamn it, you missed out. But you know, so you guys got your big initiation, who ya fucking deal? And I, I was the only new guy out of our entire platoon that didn't have it. <laughs> and so I'm running around like, you gotta be fucking shitting me. And all the old guys look at me like, motherfucker, you missed it. You're gonna get it twice <laughs> as bad. You chicken shit fuck. Like you were at this Intel school. And I'm like, oh goddamn. So for two fucking weeks. While we were out there, like, you want to talk about like paranoid? Nervous as a cat on our I'm like, roof. I'm like sleeping <laughs> under a Humvee and fucking like <laughs> up on top of the roof and like you know two person entirety. Like I'm always like scurrying around, like trying to make sure I'm at least with everybody. Like that was worse, honestly. Like an the anticipation of getting my yeah. initiation hazing, and they and they didn't do it the entire time we were out there. They waited until we got back to where I'm like, oh fuck, thank God, I never have it. <laughs> And then they wrapped me up in the fucking platoon space, and I got fucking hurricane in the mouth, and all manner of same shit. It was still, I don't think it was as bad as what you guys got, but the, that two-week period of being out there and, and expecting it and it never coming, honestly, looking back on it, it was fucking worse than if they just would have done it right when I got out there. But, um, but I will say that, you know, from my perspective, like in the society that we live in, especially growing up at, growing up in the SEAL teams as an 18, 19 year old kid, you know, the, the caliber of guys um, that you're around in that environment, like is absolutely fucking priceless. I mean, yeah. I, you, you cannot be around a, a better group of, of fucking men to emulate, to learn from, to yeah. fucking, to experience these extremely physically and mentally challenging um, experiences and, and situations and, and have those guys to kind of shape and mold, you know, the, the type of mentality that, that it brings to the table. And I, I will be forever grateful, you know, to, to have ex been able to experience that with the caliber of men of, you know, our LPO in chief, you know, Tom and Dan and, yeah. and uh, just all, 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 all the older guys that uh, had done multiple platoons and, and Shane and, and everybody just learning, learning the, the trade craft and, and you know how to be a man and how to conduct yourself and take responsibility for your actions and and just to be a part of that at, at that age i mean like I, I look at our society and how how far off most kids that age are from that and just you know how lucky we were we were to to be able to, to kind of grow up in that and i think that was a special you know, platoon man. Yeah. yeah that was a, a special <clears throat> platoon because i remember probably the biggest regret i had at team three was i remember having because we did that first golf platoon together and it come back and, and I wanted to re-enlist tax-free because yep. it was a $10,000 savings. And so you jumped ship and went to the other guys. No, but I got the pr hardcore press from the right. OPSO yeah. and it was tough. Like I, you know, I had all these, spent all this time with you guys and it was the toughest thing I did and, and, it, and I regret it to this day. Like I honestly, as much as I, you know, went with Echo to Afghanistan, but they put me in that platoon that needed 
some help. Like right. they disbanded it, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, we we're going to cut this deal. I'll, I'll get you overseas to reenlist tax free." But man, that being in that other platoon was it's not like, the same because you didn't work up with them. It's not the it's same. It's not the same, and they My, were uh, so dysfunctional. And every it seems like every SEAL team, you know, sometimes it doesn't work with the platoons. You got to right. like rip it apart and rebuild it yeah. for the chemistry. And that's that's what happened. They put me in this platoon, and I was like. It was oh, then I appreciated what a right. gift it was to like do that mm. golf platoon and be with those, yeah. the guys and the quality and the caliber of the men, and the mentorship we had in that platoon was, yeah, it was, was amazing. It was, it was a good. Yeah. Well, and you guys had the benefit of you had experience in new guys. My first platoon, so I, I didn't really get a hazing. I got my ass kicked, but like a legitimate ass beating, and it was it was eye opening for me because it was that same kind of thing. It wasn't a hazing mm -hmm. per se because my first platoon was you were at eight right? i was at eight and, yeah. and so which was like one of the first it was dump eight it was yeah. they got uh they got commissioned in october of 89 and i checked in in march of 90 i just missed being a plank owner of the command and just like when they've commissioned each success when they did seven and ten everybody cut, tries to shuffle their bad seeds out to the new yeah, commands yeah, and every yeah. they've, they've done it throughout our history you know it's 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 well documented and so that was what it was with eight so when I checked in there, they were just incorporating what's now STT was SQT, and it was just being it was a seal qualification training, and it was just being started up. the advanced, and it was by coastal training. The West Coast had theirs, the East Coast had theirs. It wasn't a conglomerate thing. It wasn't it it wasn't succinct. It wasn't clean yet, and so they were just starting it. So I checked in right out of jump school, and I was waiting to go to SQT, and there was. The guys that graduated 163, a class ahead of me, were already in that program coming back, and I was waiting to class up when the first Gulf War broke out. So they're like, fuck, we need platoons. And so they took... Uh, they took a, a chief from the West Coast who had just came to the East Coast, a dump, and a, a first class, and they said, hey, go to SQT and from the new guys that are working in training cell and the different, because then it was departmental within a command as opposed to the coast, find a fucking platoon, put it together. We had 14 new guys. We had a chief and an LPO with platoon experience, my first platoon. Yeah. And we had everything to prove. So it was a bunch of new guys. So we were rough on one another because we had to perform to the standard of these guys that were established platoons with time with time overseas and we like fuck if we're gonna go we've got to prove a point and so we were we were on our game because we were all a bunch of young guys and we had something to prove so we were always really consistently on our game we were uh, we were developing at the time a program called the tethered duck program where you're launching a boat out of the side of a out of a uh, helo and it was on a basically on a fast rope and we were trying to develop that system how to fold the boat so it would fit with your guys and all that shit and we were good at it and we'd been doing them for in three or four weeks, and we were down in. Actually, Copa. we heard about this thing. We never done it in Team yeah. Two, but we heard about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were. It so was we pretty, were down, pretty, pretty well developed. Yeah, program we, we were doing them down in uh, the, the platoon chief. We had was a, he was a rigger. He was a west. He was a west coast rigger. He'd done a ton of time in Subic, and so he was good on the air stuff. So they, hey, you need to make this shit happen. And so we're in, we're in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, out of Hurlburt Field, and we're working our asses off. And we've been doing these things for like two weeks straight, and we're good at it. And he's in his khakis doing. You know, air ops briefs, you know, fucking chief, <laughs> fucking decorated chief, fucking, pl you know. And I'm out with, with another guy in the platoon that he got the shit hazed out of him. But at any rate, <laughs> we're out there in, you know, old UDT shorts and no shirts, fucking washing boats and getting shit ready for the next iteration. He comes out and he's like, hey, uh, I got another brief to go to. Uh, you need to do this. And I've got a hose and I'm fucking spraying a boat. <laughs> and I'm an idiot. He says, uh, hey, uh, tighten that boat up. That, that needs to be changed, and you get on that. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. It's like, do what I told you to do. And I got a hose in my hand, and I think it's going to be funny. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got it, Chief. And I fucking start spraying him with the hose. <laughs> and he's a big boy. We called him Buckethead. He was 6'4 uh, and probably 240. And uh, all I see is this big fucking fist come over the spray of water right in a grill. <laughs> and in khakis... He took the hose away from me and beat my ass. Like, he didn't rough me up. He punched the shit out of me until I was like, I'm done. I quit. 
He's like, now fucking do what I told you. And he tucks his shirt back in and goes to an air brief. There's three squadrons watching this chief just beat the shit out of me. Like, in public. No hiding. No, we're going to go behind the fucking mill vans. None of that. Just kick my ass. Like, now do what I fucking tell you when I tell you to do it. Went back to work. Like, huh. the law. Maybe oh, I yeah. should stop lipping off sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. There's another lesson there. There's another lesson there. Yeah. 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 There needs to be, oh, there needs to be more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.